special thanks also to Mayo Education Centre for allowing us to um to host with their collaborations. You know, we wouldn't be able to host this otherwise. Uh, you're all very welcome this evening. Thank you for making time to attend the webinar. Um, at this on this webinar on co-host training, we hope to walk through the steps involved um, in running a tournament in your school and especially if you are running a tournament through phil.ie. So on behalf of us all, um, thank you for making the time, first of all, to be here tonight and second of all, to uh, be involved in tournament running and chess in your school. Um, I'm just going to give a quick overview of what we will run through tonight. Sorry. So uh, we're just going to run through um, student and chaperone videos, which are on our website. And I suppose, sorry, I should say before I begin, um, everything that we cover here tonight is on the FIHL website. And specifically, you'll find it on the teacher co-host section of the website under the tournaments tab. If you want to scan the QR code here on your phone, I would recommend that now. And you'll be able then to open the resources that we'll be touching on during the, the webinar. Essentially, what we will mostly be looking at this evening is a co-host video which walks through step by step exactly what you will be required to do in the run up to and in the running of a FIHL tournament. And um, if you go through the QR code, you'll also find the co-host booklet which is effectively the uh, written version of the video and goes through in really, really detailed form um, everything that you'll need to, to do. Uh, so we'll be essentially be going through both of those um, today. We'll be talking about the welcome sheet and certificates. The welcome sheet is something that is sent to you in advance of the tournament. Certificates will be given out to all participants during the tournaments. Uh, we're going to talk about the fill box, which is basically all of the equipment that you'll find at the tournaments and the various roles between the co-hosts, because each tournament will have two. So if this is your first time co-hosting uh, and you're a little bit apprehensive in some capacity, you will have a partner with you so you won't be on your own. Um, so as I say, really, the, the co-host web page under the tournament tab on the website is really where you'll find everything. And my recommendation really is to print off the co-host booklet, the um, the word form of the video that we're going to walk through this evening. If at any point you do have questions, uh, you're welcome to raise your hand and jump in at any point. Fanula is going to be keeping an eye on the chat box. So you're also very welcome to drop something in there. If we don't get to it in the moment, we'll certainly get to it at the end of the webinar. Um, and as Michael mentioned earlier, we will hang on at the end if there are um, any further questions. So the first thing we're going to do, we'll jump right in and we're going to watch the chaperone video. And I suppose um, the difference between a co-host and a chaperone, as you may know at this stage, is that uh, the, the two co-hosts are the teachers at the tournaments who are really um, supporting other teachers to get the whole tournament running. Whereas chaperones are anybody, a teacher, SNA or other member of a school community accompanying a school to a tournament. So uh, it's no harm first to just go through the chaperone video to understand what that means. Um, and that will just give us a bit of the lay of the land before we dive in to the co-host role. So we'll just play this in its entirety um, and we'll continue from there. Welcome to Fihil.ie and today we're going to talk about the Fihila Fihila chaperoning teacher video. Firstly, use the link provided by Fihil to enter the team name and the names of the players taking part in the tournament. Please ensure that this is completed and submitted on time. If a player is unable to attend, then a replacement can be brought instead. This replacement will be asked to play under the name previously submitted until such time that it can be altered. This is usually after the first round. Please take note of any students who cannot be photographed and be aware of any medical issues of the students attending. It is the responsibility of each individual school to determine how many chaperones they'd like to accompany their students. When arriving at the venue, decide where best to put your group's bags. School bags should be stacked neatly against the wall and should be stacked two school bags deep. Please leave adequate space in front of fixture posters 
and please do not stack or place any school bags in front of them. Once school bags are organised, students are free to help set up the chess boards around the room. The chess arbiter will have placed a number of chess boards in the correct places around the room. Once all the chess boards are set up, children are welcome to play practice games against their teammates. Remember to reset the boards when finished in preparation for round one. All chaperoning teachers will be asked to help out throughout the day and will be provided with a lanyard. The tournament co-host will call a quick meeting where they will organise the chaperones into teams. Each team will be assigned to a number of chess boards. All chaperones have a point system on their lanyards. And remember, it has to be three points or more for a win. Chaperones not to adjudicate on games involving their own school. Students will report the results to you and one chaperoning team member will be responsible for recording the results onto the fixtures list. Any disputed results can be referred to the chess arbiter. As new fixtures are posted onto the fixture list, it can be useful for chaperones to take a picture and ask their students to gather around. They can then assign seats from there. During lunchtime, chaperones are responsible for their students at all times. Look forward to seeing you at Fela Fela and we hope you have a great day. Great. Um, so that is what the chaperones will be looking at. I'm just going to come over now to our co-host booklet, which is uh, what you guys will be working with coming up to and during the tournament themselves. I will just say at the outset that this might look very um, colourful and detailed and so on. But essentially, this first page is a... Um, I suppose, a time stamped chronological just t schedule of what's going to be happening during the day. So there it might look like there's a lot of information in there, but actually when it's broken down into different pieces, it's nice and simple. Um, the other thing I would say is, as I mentioned at the beginning, you can find this also on the um, co-host page on the website. And I'd recommend that opening that on your phone now so that when we go back to the video after I have a little chat through this, you'll have this available to look at at the same time. Um, also, it's really recommended quite strongly that you would print this um, and read it in an entirety coming up to the tournament, I'll say, let's say a week beforehand. Um, that way you have it to hand, you've gone through everything um, and you know where you stand for each different time of the day. Hi, so, Lucy. There's just a question in here on the chaperones, um, just about the number of adults uh that are chaperones that should come is it okay if one of the two adults accompanying three teams is a co-host yes yeah so you can include your co-host in your chaperone number that's fine perfect thank you um so i suppose yeah as i say the, the cover page of the co-host booklet really goes through uh as you'll see on the left hand side the times of the different um events happening during the day and it literally breaks down what co-host A versus co-host B will be doing um, throughout. It runs through each of the rounds of chess and it ends at two o'clock by the end of the tournament. Um, then I'm going to continue on. This is really worth reading before the tournament. And I suppose this page here, page three, is really helpful because it allows um, for co-host A and co-host B to meet upon arrival. Uh, you'll also have each other's contact details prior to the tournament. So it would be nice also to touch base with them coming up to if possible. But certainly this can be done on the morning uh, when you arrive around 9 a.m. Um, the roles are fairly equally divided amongst co-host A and B. But one person might say I'm much more comfortable with, for example, the housekeeping speech rather than the chess protocol speech. And that might be what dictates um, who takes which role and once you are happy between the two of you, um, there's no real massive difference between them. Um, they are fairly equally distributed. So 
Again, this gives you a really detailed account of what happens on the morning of the team of the tournament um, and breaking down exactly what A and B will do. We'll be looking at this in the video, which is why I'm not going to go through it massively now. Um, so I'll just continue on to this delegation meeting slide. This is an important slide. Um, it tells you exactly how to support other chaperones at the tournament, how to break them into different teams so that different teams of chaperones will look after a certain amount of boards at the tournament. The number of boards that each team will look after will depend on the number of students attending any particular tournament. Sorry, right. Lucy, just the co-host booklet isn't coming up there. Now, apologies for that. That should be better. Is that right? That's perfect. OK, so let me just fly back. Um, this is the first page that I was talking about that breaks down uh, basically minute by minute what you and your other co-host will be doing. Um, then following on in the booklet, there's lots of very detailed information about what you should do. This was the page I was talking about where the roles that both A and B will have. Um, and as I say, they're pretty, the, the roles are pretty well um, divided up so that either will be very, either co-host should be comfortable with either. And um, this gives another little bit of detail around the morning of the tournament. And this is where I was saying that I'm not going to go into reading all of this now because we'll see it in the video. Um, but it is here in word form for you as well. The delegation meeting uh, is where, thanks Fanula for that, you came in. Basically, this is the area where you'll meet with other chaperones uh, and the two co-hosts will break the chaperones into groups of three or four chaperones each. And then those teams will look after a particular section of the tournament. Again, this is illustrated again in the video. Um, and I'll come to this chaperones team sheet which is where we record who's looking after what later at the bottom of this um document so uh i'm gonna go all the way down to that there now um this runs through exactly what you need to do as co-host a and as co-host b um with the chess speeches and the housekeeping speeches you literally copy exactly what's there um I suppose just to note that round three of all tournaments is a photograph round. And um, we ask that all photographs for any schools uh, will be taken in that time, any photographs of children playing. It's also really helpful to um, just make sure that on your welcome sheet, which will have been emailed to you previously, you take note of any children who can't be photographed and check that with their chaperones again that morning. Um, just before round four and after round three, there will be a QR code shared on that QR. If you follow that QR code, it will be a way for um, teachers attending on the day to register an interest uh, in any summer courses that might be coming up in the area. So, again, that's just something that the co-hosts will be communicating to other teachers there on the day. And then finally, just to note that certificates um, are typically um, presented to all schools between round five and round six. So you can go through that in loads and loads of detail. It talks to you about tidy up procedure closing piece. Shredding is important. I suppose basically anything with the name on it, that's your welcome sheet. Um, that's your fixtures. Um, anything that has names and phone numbers should be shredded before the before closing up the venue and heading home. Now, this is page 11 of your co-host booklet it's the last page so that it's you have easy access to it when you have your delegation meeting at 9 30 a.m this is where we can break up into teams of which chaperones will look after which boards so for example as it says here you might have boards 1 to 18 looked after by whoever is interested in being on that team and they will get a lanyard with Team Kings so that they know who each other are. The number of boards for which any team will take care of will be decided by the arbiter. And that is decided according to how many children are partaking in the tournament. If it's a larger tournament, obviously each team, there might be a full um, six teams. You can see here there are color coded six teams. If it's a smaller tournament, perhaps there's only need for three. 
So this is the co-host booklet. As I say, you'll find it on the website and I really recommend that you get it. And I'm going to stop share and come back to my um, come back to my actual Zoom or to my slideshow. Apologies. We're back to the slideshow and just a um, quick question just about is there a minimum number of chaperones needed with students? For example, if there were four teams or 32, is two adults enough? Um, that's one of the questions that came in. Yeah, thank you. Um, the policy with phil.ie is that it's up to each school to decide. So because I suppose depending on your students and your school context, you will know if that's appropriate. So I suppose that's our policy really is that it's up to individual schools to decide how many chaperones would be appropriate. And I know you'd be going through supervision as well and presumably just particularly around break times and toilet breaks, you know, is when the supervision is really important. Um, for the rest of the day the children are playing games you know so yeah um yeah that's true it's it's like any school setting them when they're occupied doing an activity there's usually less um chance of of fooling and messing but we have found yeah that toilet time and break time can be the times where something can happen so that does come up in the video but just to note it now I suppose the protocol is that if a child wants to use the bathroom during um a game they can stand up and approach um, a chaperone from their school to ask for permission. It obviously is best if they can wait until um, breaks. And then I suppose it is the um, responsibility of each chaperone, co-host and school to look after the behaviour of their own students um, around those times. Anything else question-wise coming up there? Uh, nothing so far. I keep an eye. Great. OK, we'll continue on. So to the co-host video. So what I'll essentially be doing here now is playing the video um, and stopping every couple of seconds just to, I suppose, reiterate and maybe detail some of the finer points. Welcome to Fihil.ie. And today we're going to talk about the Fihil Fihil co-host video. Before you watch this video, we ask that you watch the Fihil Fihil student video and the Fela Fela chaperoning teacher video. This will give you a great understanding on how Fela Fela works. In the weeks prior to the tournament, check in with the local area coordinator with regards to fail certificates. These will be printed by the local education centres. Okay, so the first point here to make around certs is that it is um, advisable that you just touch base with your co your other co-host um, and also with your local area coordinator to double check how the certs are going to get to the venue. Um, it, it's not your responsibility necessarily. It could be if you are a co-host who's also the host of the venue of the um tournament um but it might be the responsibility of your local education center so it's just best coming up to that to double check how the certs in your particular for your particular tournament are going to get to the venue you schools will receive a frame certificate a week before the fela print off the co-host booklet which is available on the teacher co-host section of our website Pro so again, you'll just see that that co-host booklet is really your Bible for leading you through how to, um, in a really detailed way, manage the tournament on the day. So printing it and reading it ahead of time is really, really advised. Prior to the tournament, agree the co-host roles on page three with your fellow co-host. A day or two before the tournament, you will receive an email from the Phil Data Controller containing the welcome and contact sheet. So uh, this welcome and contact sheet is something that's not contained in the co-host booklet because um, each individual tournament will be emailed the correct one for their tournament. So if you are co-host, you will be emailed this welcome sheet in the run up to your tournament with all the details of other co-hosts, the venue, um, other chaperones, which schools will be coming, um, their school role numbers and so on. You'll see here there's also a column for children who can or cannot be photographed. And so that's why this is a sheet um, that definitely will need to be shredded at the end of the tournament, because there does it, there are personal, I suppose, information 
um, contained in there. So this gives you an idea of who's coming to the tournament. And it also gives you a contact number in the event that you need um, for argument's sake, if there's a school hasn't been is running late and you need to make contact, you'll have a contact number for um for a chaperone uh, from that school on this page. Yes. Keep an eye on your spam account for this. The arbiter will have a box with all the resources necessary for the day. No, sorry, I just want this one is <laughs> tricky to get it screenshot of now okay so just uh this is the arbiter's box or the fihil box um the arbiter brings this to the tournament on the day so this is not your responsibility to bring it there but i suppose it's no harm to be familiar with what's in there because you will be using it um throughout the day so i'm just going to start at the the top right of your screen and i'll work my way clockwise so the first things that you'll spot in there um are some safety tape and scissors so basically that would be just um to mark down any hazards um the arbiter will be using those the red lanyards then that you'll see with the yellow arrow there um they are for the um chaperones that can be the day oh sorry Apologies. Sorry, it's hard to get a clear picture of that. No, um, sorry. So I was saying that, yeah, the clipboards and the um, lanyards there that you see with the red um, ribbon, they're used throughout the day. And you'll be, at, um, I suppose, taking those and giving them out to different teachers. As we said, who will be grouped in their chaperone teams to look after um, X amount of boards. Um, there's also clipboards there. You'll see that can be used by those chaperones as well. Uh, next, we've got the fiddle bell, which will be used to signal the beginning and the end of all rounds of chess. Next, you've got your own, the co-host clipboards. You'll see that th those are blue so that you're um, distinctive uh, from, the, from other chaperones. So there's one for co-host A and for co-host B. Um, as well as that, you'll find a fiddle folder where, again, everything is basically printed out here, including the co-host booklet and um, tournament rules, copies of the speeches that you need to make and so on. And a very important sheet there is what is page 11 of your co-host booklet. And that's uh, the one that we showed a while ago with the teams broken down. And um, you'll be able to record results there as well. There's a yellow clipboard, uh, which is used by the arbiter themselves. And just to the left of that, then you'll spot that there are fill poster, uh, I suppose, posters on which we put the fixtures of the upcoming rounds. You'll see that for the buds tournaments for the younger age pupils, there is there are the blue posters and the green ones are for the masters fixtures. So that's for um, the older students. OK, we'll continue on. A table of co-host resources would have been set up by the chess arbiter. Check the location of the toilets and the area for chaperones to have their tea, coffee or lunch. Please note open cups of tea or coffee are not allowed in the tournament hall. So please bring along your own travel mug if you wish. Yeah. Great. So just to reiterate there about the toilets, I suppose um, we have found in the past that this can be um, a spot of where, where children can find place for fooling around. So um, I suppose just a little bit of extra supervision around the toilets and in and out the bathroom is necessary. Um, and if every chaperone and co-host does that for their own school, uh, there really shouldn't be any issue there. Um, but I suppose, as we said previously, it's just it's just like um, any other school event. These are, I suppose, break times can be the, the weaker points, let's say, um, in terms of supervision. Just again, to say about the canteen, just a small little note that is important for co-hosts. You know, you will, um, each education centre, it's worth just touching base with them around the provision of um, refreshments on the day. Usually tea, coffee and perhaps some biscuits or scones or something will be provided. But again, it's good to just touch base with them in the run up to the tournament to know who's going to be in charge of that and what needs to be done to make sure that that's all right. Um, 
the venue host will also know what will be happening in regards to that. So it's worth touching base with them. Um, maybe the teacher, if it's not yourself, you could be a co-host hosting the tournament. But if it's a different location, it's worth um, asking them there. And then just finally, I suppose it is good to remember that to bring your travel mug so that you can bring your coffee or your tea back into the hall with you um, because perhaps your break might be short. We ask um, chaperones and teachers to you know, balance who goes on a break at any one time so that there's still um, good supervision in the hall at all times. At 9.30am, use the microphone to ask the students to help set up the chessboards around the room. So if there are any teams and schools who have arrived early, they're welcome to help with setting up the boards. The arbiter will have put out the actual physical boards prior to um, the children becoming involved because they need to go in a specific order. But the children are welcome to set up the pieces. Um, and once the boards have been set up, children are invited to sit with their own teams so that when we run through who's where, we get a nice cheer from every team. And I suppose just to remember on that as well, in terms of creating that lovely team effect, um, which we we really like having and enjoy at our failed tournaments, um, wearing the school jerseys is always a nice idea to encourage that team feel. As students do this, ask the chaperones to gather around you for a quick meeting. Ask chaperones to identify themselves as having been at a failed tournament previously. Assign chaperones to teams with an experienced chaperone on each team. The arbiter will have decided on the number of teams and boards to be monitored. The arbiter will have provided you with the co-host chaperone team planning sheet. Take note of chaperones on each team and provide each chaperone with their own lanyard. So I suppose um, just to reiterate there what that delegation meeting is really around. If you are a co-host, when you arrive to the tournament, it is best obviously to find your other co-host and introduce yourselves if you haven't already spoken on the phone. And it's also really helpful to go and meet the arbiter and introduce yourself to them um, and talk through the plan for the morning. Um, as the video suggests, the arbiter will provide you with support around organizing those chaperone teams in terms of how many the number of um, teams that you need the number of chaperones per team and then I suppose during that delegation meeting um, you know you will be deciding as it mentioned in the video if there are people for whom it is their first fail experience maybe they want to be the person on the team who just collects results they're just data collection they're not looking at chess boards if there are people who have been at tournaments before they might be more comfortable meeting children um to take the results and you know to double check what is or is not a checkmate and um, if there ever is a dispute around a result um, you know, you can reassure teachers that the arbiter is there to to, I suppose, do a double check, um, because I know that can for sure put people off um, if they feel like they're under pressure to to know the chess rules, where in actual fact, we just need them to behave as teachers. At 9.45 a.m., deliver the pre-tournament speeches. Speeches can be found in the co-host booklet. Ring the bell at 10 a.m. or before to begin the tournament and record the time started. When round one is concluded, the team of chaperones collect the results and deliver these to the chess arbiter. The arbiter. So just again, I suppose to say that, you know, the exact script for those speeches that the co-hosts are required to read are in that booklet that you'll find on the co-host tab of the tournaments uh, section of the website. And you can really read them word for word. There's one which talks about the housekeeping. And I suppose, um, you know, again, we'd ask to just reiterate the supervision around the toilets and the protocol around um, children asking to go to the bathroom. And then the, the second um, speech is more around the chess protocols and the actual um, how the, the games will run in terms of time and so on. Something I didn't mention previously is that the games should be 20 minutes long. But if for any reason the tournament is starting late, um, you can decide between you and your co-host if the team, if the um, games need to be broken 
taken back a minute or two each in order to catch up with saving time. Um, but te- but uh, the games should never be less than 15 minutes. So if you got to a point where uh, you're running a little late and something something has delayed uh, for some reason and you need to bring the tor- the game length back and it should be less than 15, it would be more advisable to actually remove a round of chess and for each of the remaining five rounds to be 15 minutes. Um, that way it just allows for a better game of chess. Um, and I suppose, again, when it comes to the chess protocols, you know, the re- I suppose it is your role to reiterate that children um, stay in their seats. That's uh, unless it's between games when the fixtures um, are going up on the wall or that it's a break time. And I suppose also with the um, chess protocol speech, there's a time there to talk about the photo round during round three, where teachers are free to take photographs. Um, but again, to have made sure that you have noted and discussed as a team of teachers and chaperones and co-hosts, if there are any pupils who are not allowed to be photographed uh, and obviously to avoid those. Um, also to reiterate that between rounds three and four, there will be the QR code with the link to registering interest in summer courses. And finally, um, between rounds five and six, that that is the point at which the certificates will be presented. Sure. Welcome to Fehl.ie, and today we're going to talk oh, about the fail of... Apologies. I'm just going to scroll ahead here. Just a question there, Lucy, um, just in terms of the times of the game. So what do pupils do if they are finish their game before the 15 or 20 minutes is up? Yeah, that's sorry. That's a good question. Um the there are on the first page of your co-host booklet in between each round, you'll find that there is a suggested short game or fun game uh, or a mini game that children can play in the event of finishing early, because, of course, that does happen. That's a really good point. And um, you can the, the co-hosts can suggest that, for example, um, if you finish early this round, you do a five by five chess. If you finish early this round, you can play loser chess um, or if they want to just play a practice game, um, they're welcome to do that. But I think the, the, it's a good question because they should remain in their seats until the end of the round and continue to play some description of a fun or practice game with that partner before the next round. Perfect. Thanks a million. And if there's any more questions, let's pop them in. There's a few there, but um, we'll come to them after the video. Oops. Sorry, guys. Welcome to Fehl.ie. And today we're going to talk about the... So this is after the speeches. Okay. Ring the bell at 10 a.m. or before to begin the tournament and record the time started. When round one is concluded, the team of chaperones collect the results and deliver these to the chess arbiter. The arbiter may request... So I suppose just to note that that chaperone who was sitting in the chair, they've got the results. They're the person who is just data input and uh, other chaperones will be um, coming to them with the results. So when it does come to inputting the results, you'll see that in this in the video, they show a particular way of inputting results. It's worth noting that each arbiter might have a slightly um, different or a personal way of recording results. But essentially what's important is to make sure that when the um, when the teachers are reporting the results to you, that you make sure that they report both the name and the color of the pieces that the person was playing with who won the match so that you can make sure you are recording correctly on the data sheet. Again, that is all laid out really, really clearly in the notes around the delegation meeting in your co-host booklet that you'll find on the website. Help from the co-host in order to enter the results quickly. When submitting results to the arbiter, please call the result of the player on the left side of the result sheet. The arbiter will then repeat the result to confirm. The first result, one. One. Zero. Zero. One. One. Half. Half. When you think. 
So basically, when it comes to inputting results, as long as the teachers are aware um, of both the of the child who won and that they've got that recorded correctly on their sheet, they should be able to transfer that information correctly to the arbiter. Fixtures are printed by the arbiter. The co-host should take these and fix them to the fixtures board. The process of hosting fixtures, overseeing games and collecting results is repeated six times throughout the day. Announcements are made in advance and after each round of fixtures. It is the role of the co-host to ring the bell before and after each round of fixtures. Games should last 20 minutes, but this can be reduced to keep track on time. Games should be no less than 15 minutes. If this appears necessary, then six rounds should be reduced to five rounds in conference with the chess arbiter. After the tournament, don't forget to shred the welcome and contact sheet, the chaperone team sheet and the fixtures list with the pupils' names from the day. Great. So just again, to reiterate that final point around shredding, um, basically anything with personal information on it, so that'll be your fixture sheets with all the pupils' names printed on them. Um, it will be your welcome sheet, which is the um, the sheet that will be emailed to you and your co-host uh, prior to the tournament um, and anything containing any chaperone information or school information. So that brings us to the end of the video. Um, I would just like at this point to thank you for bearing with us, uh, particularly the little bit of technical difficulties I had there. And that is basically it from us, apart from the Q&A. So Fanula, is there a few bits to go through? Yeah, so um, so we have a lot of new co-hosts this year. Um, so for example, if there was a new co-host, would they be paired with an experienced co-host normally? Um, just wondering if there's two new co-hosts, you know, um, what supports are there? Like I know the Arbiter is a great support as well um, on the day. Um, and if, if you have the materials, but but normally you would be paired with an experienced co-host. Yeah, if possible. And I would also say that your area coordinator um, is definitely experienced in co-hosting so that if there are two inexperienced co-hosts, um, definitely a phone call to your area coordinator in the days coming up to the tournament with any more questions or indeed any of the phil.ie team, you know, would be a good idea. Um, you, you won't go wrong if you follow the letter of the law of the booklet on the website, but definitely um, a little bit of preparation will help if both are new to the to the role this year. Absolutely. Um, and another similar question, um, you know, if if there's a new co-host who hasn't been at a tournament before, is that OK? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I suppose, um, you know, following the videos and the booklet will help them to understand. And I have always found, um, you know, when I first came to a field.ie tournament, I certainly wasn't um a connoisseur of chess or anything like that and I would have found um it's like a lot of things in in teaching and education it maybe when you're reading watching videos it can seem quite complex but these things have a way of running themselves once they get going certainly the first page of the co-host tournament booklet and the last page as well as the page number five around the delegation meeting and um, they'll be your key supports in terms of your organization of everybody else yeah excellent i absolutely agree and you know the day does really run really smoothly you know once you're set up and uh, the arbiter again is a great support Um, you know if you have any questions they'll be able to guide you Um, if if a co-host wanted to find the name and number of their other co-host where would they find that to if they wanted to touch base with them well, you'll certainly get it on your welcome sheet that will be emailed to you in the days coming up to the tournament. And as well as that, your area coordinator might share that with you in the days and weeks coming up to the tournament as well. Perfect. And just a question on shredding the documents. Should they be shredded on site? Um, would that be up to the venue host maybe to shred them? Um, or what, what's normally done? 
yeah, I suppose, look, preferably on site is great because then it's done and dusted before anybody heads home. Um, I suppose, look, if you were in the event where there is no shredder uh, at the venue, then, of course, maybe one co-host taking responsibility for it and doing it in their own school as soon as possible would suffice, you know. Yeah, as long as they're collected up um, mm -hmm. and brought off. Um, I'm just going to check. I think that's all the questions. I'm just going to have a quick look again um, just to see. Um, so <laughs> somebody asked, what happens if the co-hosts don't get along? <laughs> um, so look, I suppose <laughs> normally it, it runs really smoothly. Once you have your roles, you know, and you have your meeting in the morning, um, you know, it, it'll run like clockwork. And, you know, you follow you follow the plan to the letter, um, as you said, Lucy. Yeah. And if you don't, you don't have to be, it's like a lot of things, you don't have to be best friends to run it well together, but hopefully it wouldn't be um, such a disagreement that you, that it would be a problem. <laughs> like they were only joking anyway, I think. <laughs> Is it okay to bring the children to the venue around 9am if you're a co-host to get the children to set up the boards? Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Great. And I suppose just to thank you all again um, for your time both this evening and for getting involved in the tournaments this year um, on behalf of Phil.ie. We hope you have a really great time. Um, the tournaments are always fantastic days out. And um, yeah, just wish you all the best of luck. It's actually just a quick question came in there. Uh, do the children need to bring the sheets, you know, their Fela Fela checklist um to the with them on the day that um, the school they don't have to they can if that's helpful for your kids and for you but if you are confident that they have um gone through that checklist for themselves in the run up and you've read uh, sorry you've watched the student video online with them that you'll find on the fiddle.a website and um, they should be well prepared by then perfect